Hi everybody and welcome to another episode of Test Kitchen Wednesday, although today is actually Friday. I had this dish that I really wanted to do this week and then I was putting it all together on Wednesday and realized I'm missing a really, really crucial tool and it's this um, little blowtorch. this recipe um, gosh a month or so ago and it's a vegan unagi bowl unagi don unagi unaju um, uh, so unagi is eel um, unadon unagi don is unagi bowl don buri is bowl um, which is why you have things like katsudon and uh, oyakodon and don means bowl and then there's another unagi dish separate from unagi sushi um, that is called unaju. And it's also a bowl type dish, but it's actually um, a layered rice and eel and rice and eel um, uh, dish that is served in a lot of restaurants, a lot of eel specific restaurants in Japan. So I figured that for today, I'm going to do the more the fancy pants version <laughs> and do the unaju and show you how that's done. Um, we are going to be using a Japanese eggplant. Um, now, if you, I mean, you know, if you know American eggplants, they're gigantic. <laughs> this is a Chinese eggplant. It's, it's a lot softer. Um, I don't think I've ever seen a Chinese eggplant that was like super stiff. Um, both of these have a thinner uh, peel or skin than American eggplant. Um, so you can actually totally eat this with the skin on. American eggplant is a little tough. So um, with American eggplant, I do recommend that you peel it, kind of like what we're going to do today. I, I'm going to do the Japanese version with the Japanese eggplant, although if you can't find Japanese eggplants in your local market, Chinese eggplants, which are a little bit more readily available, you can get them in Chinese and Korean and just kind of generic Asian supermarkets. Um, and absolute worst case scenario, you can use an American eggplant. So, I'm gonna move this a little bit out of the way. First things first, even though this is a Japanese eggplant, the, thin, the skin is really thin, I do still uh, peel it um, for, for this dish, and it's recommended that you peel it for this dish, only because what you're trying to do is make it like something else, you know? So you're trying to make it like an eggplant, um, like an uh, eel, and if you're gonna do that, Having um, the skin isn't really something that, you know, I would leave on. Because I think in this, in this dish, it's not all that great. See, softer, softer eggplant means it's a little, little bit more difficult to peel. To me, this is, this is like a really good you know, example of a good kind of vegetarian slash vegan dish. Um, Cause you're not using like a fake meat. You're not using something that was like, you know, manufactured in um, a, a factory <laughs> with a bunch of chemicals, um, which, you know, if you're a vegan, that's, and that's your only option sometimes, you know, things like impossible burgers and stuff um, allow you to be more social around the people that aren't vegan. You know, so if everybody goes, hey, let's go to uh, this burger joint. You don't want to say, oh, I don't want to go because I'm vegan. You can actually go now. But um, my personal um, preference is to find dishes that allow you to use actual vegetables and kind of like make it look like a meat product. Um, okay, so now that you have this really cute Japanese eggplant that's peeled, you're going to butterfly it. So you're not going to cut it all the way through. And you're going to kind of open it up. Ooh, actually, I'm going to do two. Um, maybe be easier if I cut off these ends. Okay. 
And then you, what you want to do is just kind of butterfly these open. So they kind of stick together, but they're kind of opened up. Once you've done that, you're going to pop these on a plate and put them in a microwave um, for 30 seconds and then flip them over in another 30 seconds. I'm going to run and do that and then I'll be right back. Okay, so I have this split open um, uh, unagi, <laughs> eggplant unagi uh, that has been in the microwave. I actually ended up cooking a little bit longer um, so it was a minute on each side, but I kept flipping it over every 30 seconds because I don't, I didn't want to, um, make it too, too mushy. Now, some recipes will tell you to microwave the eggplant first, but I have very sensitive fingertips and I can't do the secondary cut on the, on this, um, when it's super, super hot. So... What they tell you, a lot of this is about look and, te and, and texture. And one of the things about uh, unagi is that, you know, it's, it's eel. So there's um, kind of like fish, there's like flakes, right? So you're gonna try to uh, mimic the, the, the flaky part of unagi and also make it look a specific way. So you're actually going to also, also you're not cutting all the way through, you're just scoring it. And it's easier to score it on the side that has the seeds. It's okay if you make a mistake and you cut through, you know. This is not a dish that you're making at a restaurant. This is a dish that you're just making for yourself and maybe, you know, your vegan friend, so. Okay, so we have these two uh, pieces of fake, fakey fake eel. <laughs> um, I'm gonna put this over here. And now we actually move this over to um, the frying pan. So let me move this over and move our trusty, trusty condo up here and turn that on. Just like everything else with this portable stove, I'm gonna start with it on a medium to medium low. We have our unagi. Um, you can use a potato starch or a corn starch just to make this a, have a little bit of a crispy outside. Um, this isn't like tonkatsu or anything that's supposed to have a super, it's not a breaded crispy outside. This is just enough to make the outside get a little, a little crispy. A little bit of oil in the pan, not a whole lot. Move this big Chinese eggplant out of the way. I will be using that later. I actually um, made a pickle that you'll be seeing later once I do the presentation of the Chinese eggplant. Once you have the heat on and a little bit of just regular vegetable oil, Put it seed and starch to side down first. Watch me try to be graceful. <laughs> and I'm going to put all this away. And you're just going to let that uh, crisp up a little bit in the frying pan. And then we're going to kind of keep an eye on this. And then we will be flipping this over 
and then making our amazing, amazing kabayaki <laughs> eel sauce. It's actually a really good sauce to know. It's like teriyaki, but it's a little bit thicker and it's definitely something that you could use for things like yakitori, um, things where you kind of want to glaze, like you used it for like grilled salmon, um, and you can definitely, you know, put it on your on your sushi if you if you're the kind of person that likes eel sauce um, on their sushi. It's kind of good to have this sitting around in your fridge. Today's, uh, <laughs> today's recipe is actually kind of fun because this is the first time doing it for me, um, but it's something that I really wanted to try the minute I saw the recipe because I, you know, because I, because I like the whole concept of eel sauce. If I can do that with a piece of eggplant, which is a vegetable I like already, like I love a good eggplant farm, um, then, uh, then this makes me happy. If I, for those few times that I really wanna, you know, have like an eel bowl or something with eel sauce. <laughs> Plus I also have some vegan friends and so it's kind of nice to have something in your back pocket that you can say, oh yeah, I can totally whip something up. It's gonna taste amazing. Now I don't wanna put too much oil on the frying pan because I wanna have a little bit of a char um, we will be adding a little bit more char after we put the kabayaki sauce on it and then use the torch. Fibros, like fire! <laughs> oh, that is looking so good. Wow. It's also kind of neat because it has a even though it's butterfly, because it's eggplant, it has the kind of soft texture. Wow, I'm impressed. That actually looks like if you take the green, <laughs> out of, the green color out of the equation, it really does look like sliced eel, sliced and butterfly eel. Um, little. I can take my chopsticks, I can feel it. it's a little crunchy on the outside. I'm really excited to try this. <laughs> I like things that are like relatively simple fairly inexpensive, but taste super luxury, you know? Um, and eel bowls are, are kind of something that is a luxury item. It's, um, we have a thing in Japan called doyo no hi, which doyo is, it's, it's kind of similar to how we have equinoxes here, like seasonal equinoxes. Um, we have seven doyo no hi uh, this year, um, and it's usually, when the seasons change and they recommend uh, kind of like a ritual, you know, kind of like eating ham for Easter and turkey for uh, Thanksgiving. They tell you that it's a good idea to go out and have some eel, um, whether in the form of uh, unagidon una or unaju um, for the times in the year where the seasons are changing. Um, it's commonly known in Japan that eel is supposed to bring you a lot of stamina. So it's one of these dishes that actually gets uh, brought out in the summertime a lot, but there are unagi specific specialty restaurants that will also have doyo nohi specials. Um, and some people only go and have unagi on those days. I'm gonna flip this over one more time because I think this one could use a little bit extra color. Wow. Yeah, see if I hadn't used the, the little bit of potato starch and that tiny, tiny bit of oil, 
I think this would have come out as crispy on the outside, but still keep like it's kind of soft, soft interior. Now with unagi, uh, with real unagi, with real eel, the, um, the chef makes those little kind of perpendicular cuts because they're actually trying to cut through all the little tiny bones that are in unagi. And they, there's, it's just impossible to remove all those bones um, by hand. So it's just easier to, um, to put cuts into the bone, the bony side of eel. Um, so that you can just kind of eat it. And I think that might be one of the reasons why my mom didn't like it so much because she didn't really like bones. Um, mom, much like a lot of Japanese mothers from that generation, amazing when they eat fish, they could put a piece of fish in the mouth and just kind of move their, their tongue around their teeth and just pick out bones. Like she was just so incredible. Um, it is not a skill that I have mastered 100%, and it's not something that you see in a lot of American restaurants with people just picking bones out of their, their mouth. Um, so I haven't gotten in so much practice with that, but uh, when I was living in Japan, I was pretty good at it. Okay, now that we have our eel fake kabayaki, which is what this is called when it's just a grilled piece of eel. Now, you don't usually do this in a frying pan. You usually do this on a grill with um, these skewers inside the eel and you kind of flip them and you dip them into the tare, which is this kabayaki sauce, and then put it right back on the heat. But because we're using eggplant and um, frying pans are easier than pulling, pulling out a grill grill, <laughs> like a full-on grill, um, this is a really good substitute. So, the heat on super low. And we can make the sauce right in this frying pan. I'm going to, you can do it in the frying pan with the pieces in there, but I kind of want to just do this separately. So, kabayaki sauce is super, super easy, much like most Japanese sauces. It's, um, but I'm actually using a measuring utensil at this time. Um, it is one to one to one to one. So one tablespoon of sake. I'm going to turn this off for now. One tablespoon of sake. One tablespoon of mirin. And mirin is just, you know, sake with the sugar, but that's already melted, kind of like a simple syrup. Um, one tablespoon of soy sauce. And then one tablespoon of sugar. Use this. I know, real sugar. <laughs> and then I've seen this in some recipes, but not in others. But there's, um, but it makes sense to me. It's. Uh, bringing out the hondashi, the uh, the dashi um, dehydrated powder. Uh, it's made out of dried kelp uh, broth and then it's dried and used in the powder so you can use it to make, make miso soup. You've seen me use this before. Um, to me, this addition makes complete sense because eggplants don't taste like fish. And this adds, this is made with um, kombu seaweed as well as bonito flakes. And so that kind of um, bonito fishy um, flavor kind of gets into the sauce, which I think is a really smart idea um, to get a, like a fishy, a very, very light fishy flavor into this otherwise non-fishy dish. Gonna mix this all together and get it heated up. And we're gonna cook this down until it becomes a really nice thick syrupy glaze. Maybe 
turn it up just a little bit. There we go. See these little tiny bubbles. Oh, it smells, it smells oceany already because of the addition of that dashi. Now, if you don't like um, that fishy-ish scent, um, it's kind of like Thai food and like fish sauce or Vietnamese food and it's fish sauce. If you don't like a particular flavor, try leaving it out. See if you like it without it. Like it's not necessary, although the traditional version, you know, um, is a fishier <laughs> dish because it's a cooked eel dish. Okay, and as that starts cooking down some more, we're gonna put our eel kabayaki pieces in, gently flip them over. when I base, my pieces fell off, but I think that's okay. We get a special. Obviously easier than the chopsticks. And again, you can use the sauce um, for a bunch of different things, you know, once it's cooked down. Oh, smells amazing. And tastes so good. It's not super sweet. Um, if you would like it to be, you know, like the American eel sauce, super sticky sweet, you can add a little bit more um, sugar, but uh, it's not necessary. But see how like the green color of the eggplant goes away, like the minute you add the soy sauce and, you know. Wow, it smells amazing. <laughs> Flip this over one more time. Now the version that I'm making, which is called unaju, is a layered uh, eel dish. So the nice thing is for the, the center layer, I can use this one that's kind of broken. <laughs> because then they'll never see. You can see the sauce start to like really thicken up. And I think that you can, you know, obviously, like I was saying before, like in a in a pinch, you can use American eggplant, but I think that then you're gonna end up with with fake unagi that's like really super thick, which is not how unagi is because unagi is, you know, is, is a thin eel that gets cut open. So, um, and butterfly before it's grilled. I hope you guys have some amazing 4th of July plans. Um, if you're in the States, I'm not really doing much of anything, but I live, you know, living in Vegas means I can probably just drive out to the top of the hill and just watch the, the, the fireworks on the strip, um, the comfort of my own car or sitting outside my own car and in and out in 10 minutes and don't have to worry about, you know, tourists, like drunk tourists on the strip because that is happening already. So, oh yeah. It's amazing how similar to eel that looks now. Okay, I'm gonna turn this off. And I'm going to transfer this to a rack.
And the only reason I'm moving this over to a rack is because I just don't feel comfortable using a torch on my frying pan. <laughs> so let me move this out of the way. Let me move this right in. And then we're going to use our blowtorch um, to just put a little bit of a char on this. Oh my gosh, that looks, it caramelizes the sugar. Makes it a little bit more crispy. And then adds that kind of burnt caramelized flavor to your unagi so that it kind of you know, resembles um, the flavor that you get from having the real piece of, of eel um, grilled, like over, over charcoal grill. So let me see if that's enough. Dude, oh, that charcoal smell, <laughs> which is not, it's not charcoal, but that kind of, you know, you know what I'm talking about, that kind of charred smell. So good. Smoky. <laughs> so now that this is done, I'm going to clear all of this up like like I always do, and I'm going to come back and show you how this gets presented, and you can watch me do a taste test. I'll be right back. Welcome back, and uh, we have everything laid out, all the cooking stuffs out of the way, and um, I've got my jubako going. Most of the time jubako are square or rectangular. Um, what I have today is something that is round because it's just, it's a bento box that I have at home. So, <laughs> um, a regular unagi bowl or unagi don would just be this with the eel on top and that's it. And unaju elevates it a little bit more by making it into a layered dish. First of all, we're gonna add some Shredded nori, this is unseasoned. Try not to make too much of a mess here. <laughs> and this gives that additional, this is usually what happens in a unaju as well. But in the case of this kind of vegan one, it makes it even, even cooler. So do that. And you would add my broken pieces <laughs> of unagi, the fake unagi. Obviously, I'm only using my fingers because it's me. Syrupy sweet, <laughs> so it got stuck to the. To the grate. Second layer. This on top. I think in hindsight, for if I ever make this again, I would just make more eggplant. Um, so I have more for the layers. Or I would just do a simple bowl, you know? And then this really good piece, this really pretty piece, goes right on top. Uh, traditionally, if it was a bowl, you'd have another piece, <laughs> which I don't. But I wanted to do this and at least try it. Um, and then maybe grill up another eggplant that I have in the fridge um, so I can make photos for my Instagram. <laughs> so if you have a little bit extra sauce left over, you can totally use that as well. I kind of like my, my, um, my, my rice to be less saucy. So let's go ahead and give this a shot. I don't even know which side to begin. I'm just gonna take a big piece. <laughs> All 
guys. Oh my gosh, that is so tasty, tasty. Like I said before, I'm not an eel fan only because of my mom and the fact that I just didn't really eat it growing up. But hands down, I would make this over and over again. I like this very, very much. Um, but in hindsight, I'd make more, more eggplant to go on top. <laughs> I hope you liked my attempt at making a vegan unagi bowl unagi layered oju, right? Um, traditionally, this would come with a very light soup. So not like a very heavy, like a miso soup or tonkotsu. This is called osui mono. And it's just a broth, kind of like a consomme. Some additional um, overnight um, eggplant pickles that I made, just a little bit of salt, um, just because it kind of ties in with the fact that this dish is an eggplant dish as well. Anyway, I hope you get to try making your, your, you trying your hand at your own vegan or vegetarian unagi bowl. If you do, let me know what you think.